Welcome to Animated Home Brewing, 7-Minute Recipe. Today we're brewing a Belgian double, or, uh, uh, double? Dubel? Is, hold on, j just a second. Hey, hey, internet, it, is it double or, or double? Well, the style was invented at West Mall Abbey in the north of Belgium, so the original pronunciation is probably more Dutch-sounding. Google Translate seems to give it a Dutch pronunciation, which is more like, double. Uh, okay. Double. 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 Oh, oh, okay, that's enough. Thank you. But... Belgian brewers in the French part of Belgium will pronounce it with more of a French accent. English brewers will probably mispronounce both the French or Dutch pronunciations. So, just going with Belgian double is perfectly fine. Oh, okay, great. So, uh, let's do a Belgian double. Um, do, do you mind doing the, doing the thing? Oh, sure. If you like this amazing content, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you can get the next video. Thanks, Internet. You literally typed my lines and told me I had to say these words. Oh, I don't oh, have a oh, choice. Oh, okay, okay, let's get brewing. Belgian double, seven minute recipe. As always, the recipe is in the description. With water at strike temperature, we're gonna start with Pilsner two row as our base malt, then Munich malt to add some slight copper and soft orange color and a bit of malt characteristic, then some Cara Munich malt, darker, hints of caramel, biscuit flavor, aroma. And later on, we're gonna add some candy syrup in the boil, D45, which will hopefully enhance that nice copper amber color and give us a little alcohol boost too. The BJCP guidelines for this style call for dark amber to copper color, flavors of dried fruit, malty sweetness, medium to low bitterness, medium body. Hopefully we'll make something kind of like this happen. We'll do a three stage mash before mashing out at 170 Fahrenheit. Then it's time to sparge. And then we'll bring everything to a boil. At boil, we'll start the 60 minute countdown and we'll add our first hop additions, which is at 60 minutes with one ounce holler, holler towel. Holler towel? Holler toe? I don't know. Just whatever. Holler towel. Good enough. Cool. Thanks. We'll also add the candy syrup, which is an amber, dark amber colored syrup. It's going to add hints of toffee, caramel, maybe some toasted bread flavors. It also gives us the extra fermentable sugar boost that we need to hit our target alcohol level. Belgians love adding sugar. 50 minutes later, second round of hops, another holler towel one ounce with 10 minutes left to go in the 60 minute boil. And also toss in that wort chiller for sterilization. Okay, boil's done. We're gonna bring this all the way down to target pitch temperature for the yeast, which in this case is 1214 Belgian Abbey style ale. This yeast can be used for a bunch of different Belgian styles, triples, doubles, Belgian strongs. And we're gonna try and pitch this right down the middle of the target temperature range, which in this case is, let's say 73 Fahrenheit. Back to brew day. I've sanitized the fermenter, the airlock, and the tubing, and we've hit our target of 73 Fahrenheit for the wort. Take a quick sample for the gravity reading to measure our alcohol level, and we'll send it all to the fermenter. Pitch the yeast and give it a shake to get the oxygen in there. Then I put it in my spare fridge and wrap it around with a heat mat. This was an upgrade I made recently and has made a really big difference. Taking temperature control more seriously has been a really big help. I use an ink bird to manage temperature. When the fermenter is getting too warm, it directs power to the fridge to cool it down. And anytime it senses it's getting too cool, it directs power to the heat mat to heat it up, keeping it balanced within a set temperature range. I highly recommend this for new brewers. It's a great way to control temperature, especially when temperature ranges in your house aren't stable enough to maintain your target. So if you're interested, there's a link in the description. Two weeks later, fermentation is done. I wanted to put half into bottles and half into my keg. So I sent the first half to a bucket that has some dextrose priming sugar dissolved in water. That extra bit of sugar is gonna give the remaining yeast enough fuel to carbonate in the bottle. The other half is going to the keg. I use brewing software like Brewfather to calculate PSI for the keg and priming sugar quantities for the bottles in order to achieve uh, 2.6 volumes of CO2. Cap it, seal it, done. Original gravity was 1.062 and final gravity 1.014, giving an alcohol by volume of 6.4%, which was a little bit less than my target of 6.8%, but still within the style guidelines. So I'm gonna say close enough. Which brings us back to today. After one month in the keg, there still wasn't very good head retention. Like the foam would just dissipate after 10 seconds. 
But by the second month, the head retention really started to take shape. So the final product turned out really well. The smell, the taste, the color, I'm just really happy with this one. Very close to the style and what I was going for. It has a kind of rich Belgian yeast estuary smell. <sighs> Makes you feel like a monk when you're smelling it. <sighs> Delicious. Rich, smooth, complex. I'm not gonna lie, this is maybe my best beer of the year. Hmm. Huh. Maybe I am a really good brewer. You know, but maybe I should become a brewmaster and, and open my own brewery. I could make like millions of dollars making this kind of beer. This is so easy. I, um, I could be hold on. Famous Not could. so fast there. Remember your failures? All those disaster beers you've made? Well, y yeah, but, but that was a long time ago. And remember those times when you dumped out entire batches because they smell black farts? Well, they, they, they weren't that terrible. Yes, they were. They smelled like farts. Or remember the times when you had exploding bottles, or infected batches, or over-carbonated beers, or you dropped your glass carboy and broke it, or the oh, time okay, when you okay, thought okay, you fine, had a good fine, recipe. Fine, but, but, but this one was a good one, right? Um, sure. Okay. Nice one. Good for you. Cool. Thanks. You know what? I like this one so much, I want to compare it to an actual Belgian double. Like this one. The Chimay Red. So mine's a little bit lighter in color. Aromas? Comparable, multi, rich, belgian -y. flavor. Chimay Red has more body, heavier, richer. Uh, the alcohol is noticeably higher. Probably more pronounced dark fruit flavors like raisins, prunes, dates in the Chimay. But I feel like mine is still pleasantly soft on those notes. Mine's kind of like a, a soft double or like a, a dubel, if you will. You know what? I'd be happy to drink both. If I were to take mine and try and make it closer to the Chimay Red, and turn it into an attempt at a clone recipe, I'd probably have a longer mash at higher temperatures in like the 150 Fahrenheit range, and probably add some more candy syrup or maybe more caramunic malt. But I'm not complaining. This is good. This is good beer. I'm gonna say having the right yeast strain and making sure that yeast is happy is the key to hitting this flavor and aroma profile. So that would be my advice. If you like this content, you should... Hit like, subscribe, and the bell icon so you can get the next video. See you next time. Cheers.